Hello friends, welcome to Islington Listens, wisdom from a community of faith that doesn't think the same, vote the same, or love the same, but we are trying our best to follow in the way of Jesus with compassion and hope. While you're thinking about salt and your comfort foods, and if you walk outside, you'll notice some garlic growing in the garden. So I want to take you to an everyday parable about garlic. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus told his disciples, but I wonder if he knew about garlic. Garlic would have made just as memorable a metaphor as salt, because like salt, garlic adds flavor to food. Like salt, a little bit of garlic goes a long way. In fact, just like salt, too much garlic can make the food inedible. But garlic has a few special qualities of its own that salt doesn't. Salt is secretive, but garlic is public. (laughs) If you add salt to your food, no one can tell how much you used. If you add garlic, Everyone will know, especially if the garlic user happens to stand beside you in a public place. There's only one way to disguise garlic breath, and that's for everyone to have some garlic, including the stranger on the bus. In that sense, garlic is much more democratic than salt. Garlic also does something that salt can't. It can reproduce itself. Salt is a mineral, inert, of lifeless. But salt will never create more salt. But if you plant some garlic cloves, well, in a few months, you'll have more. Like the Christian faith itself, there's a mystery to garlic. When you look at it first, it looks like a unit, complete. Take it or leave it. But when you look closer, you can peel off its layers, and there's more inside than you expected. In fact, when you open up a garlic bulb fully, you'll find more cloves inside. The one is many. Think of them as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, as Mother, Lover, and Friend. It matters not what names you apply. The amazing thing is that a single unity can contain such diversity, yet they're all the same garlic. You are the garlic of the earth. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? (laughs) Now, there aren't any parables in the scripture about garlic, but there is a parable of the leaven. We have been sharing these parables all summer long. Well, last week you got a rest and a bit of a nap. If you missed the service, go back to that. But parables are old. They have been given to us long, long ago. They're a gift. Like this box looks old and it looks like a present, it's also gold. It's like a treasure because parables are valuable. And they have lids, because a parable can sometimes be hard to open. You can be ready, but it might not open for you. So I wonder today if the parable of the leaven might open for you. It's only two verses in the Bible, so you could even memorize this story and you can come back to it. There's a few things in here that might help us. I wonder if you even know what leaven is. I wonder what this could be. Oh, is it an arm sling? Could be. I wonder if it's an arm sling. No, Diane says no, it isn't. I don't think so. I wonder if it's a tent or a kite or a bird, or a headscarf. It helps parables to open if we come to them with wonder. The only other thing in my box is a woman. 
and a table. And I wonder who they are. There was once someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people just had to follow him. And when they followed him, they would ask him questions. They wondered who he was. But he would also talk to them about a kingdom. It was not like any kingdom that they had ever lived in. It was not like any kingdom that they had ever visited, and it was not even like any kingdom that they'd ever heard of before. So they couldn't help it. They had to ask him, what was the kingdom of heaven like? And one time, when they asked him, he said this, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, which is a lot. She hid the leaven in the mixture, which swelled up and leavened all over. It got big and puffy like the bread you buy in the store. That's it. That's the parable. And if you missed it because you're doing your grocery list or thinking about something else, I'm going to do it one more time so that you can hear it. I'm sure Jesus would speak and preach and then walk away and people wish that they could have written it down or memorized it. And yet some people did. And so those stories are with us because someone remembered and passed it on. Imagine the hordes of people being drawn to Jesus, hearing about what it might be like to follow him, and then hearing about the kingdom of heaven. And they were so curious about it because it didn't sound like anything they had ever experienced. It was not like any kingdom where they had ever visited. In fact, it was like no kingdom that they'd ever heard of. So they couldn't help it. They asked him, what the kingdom of heaven was like. And one time, when they asked him, he answered, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour, which is a lot. And she hid the leaven in the mixture, which swelled up and leavened all over. It got big and puffy like the bread that you buy in the store. Now, I hope you're picturing a sourdough starter. Perhaps you had a COVID adventure with sourdough. And I wonder if you had it just bubble over and become a mess in the back of your fridge. The growingness of the leaven. He told this to verse story, and it has found its way to us this morning. And it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder if the woman has a name. It makes me wonder who the woman could really be. It makes me wonder if the woman was happy. Because we all know what it's like to taste food that people have made where the love got forgotten. And it affects the bubbling over, doesn't it? I wonder what the bread could really be. And I wonder what that leaven is in the parable, in your own life, in this community, in our world. I wonder if you could take the bread that was leavened all over and put it back like it was before the woman hid the leaven in it. I wonder if you've ever come close to a place like this. I mean, not just in the parable 
or in the art of making bread. Because some of you are really good at making bread. You've practiced and you know your timing. And some of you have tried. And I'm certain that someone besides me forgot the leaven. (laughs) Or used leaven that had expired and didn't do what you had hoped it would do. Every time we come close to a parable, Jesus leaves us to wonder about what the kingdom of God is like. And we can spend a lot of time wishing that where we are was different. In fact, we can spend a lot of time complaining that someone else needs to fix or change or make it better. But I wonder today what our world looks like if you think of yourself as leaven. I wonder if you'd rather be the woman. I wonder if you'd prefer to be the table where the work gets done on. I wonder if you'd rather be Jesus telling the story and then seeing what other people would do with it. Or I wonder today if you just need to taste that big, white, fluffy, risen bread. We each have ideas about what the kingdom of God is like. The longer we're together in community, we bump up against differences. We can get caught in old sermon ideas that say the kingdom is for later and not for now. Except that Jesus didn't say the kingdom of God is like leaven that you leave in the grocery store for somebody else to buy. The kingdom of God is here. And you are part of it. And the world is different because as followers of Jesus, we're paying attention to what we're part of. And so I've asked the pickup choir to give us a taste of what the music of that kingdom might look like. An invitation for you before we come to this kingdom table. Let's bring forth God's kingdom. Thanks for listening, friends. For other ways to connect, go to IslingtonUnited.org. May God's wisdom and love keep finding you.